Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So I just want to start off by saying this cat on the bed is not mine and Phil's cat. It is the neighbour's cat. It used to come around once a month. Now it started coming around weekly. It literally came around yesterday. So yesterday was Sunday and on Friday as well and now it's here today. So it's gonna chill there through this video. So as you guys can see by the title of this video, this is going to be the 23 books that I hope to read in 2023. I think this video is going up in April so like we'll be a few months into the year by the time that this video goes up but it's never too late to do one of these videos some of these books I have already read or started reading um, because I obviously want to try and get through them I also have a stack down here that you guys can't see as well as everything here so I've got a mixture of like Christian books non-fiction and fiction books some are like series as well and some are standalones so I have a lot to get through but I'm really excited for all of these books some of these books I have bought recently over the past probably like month and some of these books are also like books that I've had for like a really long time that I really want to get through one of my goals for this year is to read kind of like half of the books that I've owned for more than like three two or three years yeah without further ado let's jump into this video so the first lot of books I have included as one because I want to finish a series I'm kind of cheating with this one but this is the only one that I've done this to and it's my video so I can do what I want the first book or books that I want to read for 2023 is I really want to finish off the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series. So there is six books in the series plus this little novella book. I've read the first three, absolutely loved them, so I really want to finish the last three. So we have The Map of Days, which is book four, The Conference of the Birds, which is book five, and The Desolations of Devil's Acre, which is book six. And then we also have Tales of the Peculiar, which is a little novella book. Now this I actually managed to get from the library as like a discard so they were like getting rid of it which is so exciting for me because I obviously really want to read this book here. It doesn't really match the rest of my set but like I just think it's really pretty that I don't really mind too much. It's very different to anything that I've read before and it has these like pictures and stuff in the book that helps to tell the story. Ransom Riggs has kind of crafted the story around these photos and they're all like 100% real so I think that is so cool and he has such a creative mind to create a world around these pictures that are just quite frankly very odd. I would say it's kind of like a magical realism so like it's set in the real world but then it has like an aspect of magical realism but it's not quite dystopian either. The next book on my list that I want to get through this year is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I have actually started this book. I am on page 24 so I haven't read too much of it but I did start it on the plane. I feel like everybody has read this book and I just haven't. So far I'm really really loving it. I'm actually currently reading The People We Keep which is a library book. I have read November 9 by Colleen Hoover as well and I really enjoyed the way that she had written that. I'm excited for this. I know it is meant to be a tearjerker though so like kind of taking my time with it a little bit. The next book on my list again is a fiction book and that is this one here. So this one is The Silent Patient by Alex. Is it Ma Michaelides? Michaelides? I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry. It says only she knows what happened. Only I can make her speak. Basically this book kind of follows along this journalist who goes to this mental house because there is a patient there who shot her husband five times in the head obviously is very mentally unstable so she's gone to this mental place and she hasn't spoken a word since and this journalist or this like reporter person whatever they are wants to try and get her to talk because no one has been able to figure out why she shot her husband so i thought this would be such an interesting read this one's kind of more of like a thriller book whereas like Colleen Hoover is obviously like a romance book. I really want to try and branch out because I feel like at the moment I either read dystopian or romance. I don't really read like fantasy. I read like the odd thriller but nothing too like crazy so yeah I just think I want to branch out a little bit this year. The next book that I have is a Christian book. Now this one I have started as well. I'm like a third, now nah, probably like a quarter of the way through this and I really want to try and finish it this year and that is this one here. This one is A Place of Quiet Rest by Nancy Lee DeMoss. At the top it just says finding intimacy with God through a daily devotional life. So yeah, it's kind of like a devotional kind of book. I am up to chapter uh, this is part two. Oh, chapter three. But I've had this book for a really, really long time. And yeah, I just really want to get through it. From what I've been reading of it so far, it is really good. So 
I am excited for this. Next up on my list, I have The Famous Akatar, first book in the Akatar series. So this is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas, or Mass, depending how you pronounce it. Now, I know this has been popping off on booktok lately so i wanted to read it and see what it was about this one is a fantasy book this one it just seems like a girl has been taken prisoner in a like fantasy world i don't know i purely bought it because rachel Catherine was raving about this series and i wanted to see what the hype was about and if she loves it i'm like surely i will love it too um, this is a series of five so i do only have the first book as of right now which is good because i don't really have a lot of room for any more books like i'm struggling as it is and i need to get another bookshelf if i like this i will end up going to purchase the rest of the series so i hope i like it <laughs> okay hopefully i'm in kind of the same position um i just opened the door a little bit so i apologize if you can hear like the cicadas and stuff outside and i also had to change my battery so hopefully i'm in kind of the same spot so as i was saying the next book that i have on my list of books to read for 2023 is the inheritance games by jennifer lynn barnes now again i know this is a trilogy and i think there might be another book coming out afterwards or there's like a spin-off series coming or something i feel like everybody has read this book and i just haven't yet um i bought this brand new like halfway through last year because i really wanted to read it and i just ran out of time basically the premise of this one is that that follows the story of this girl and she kind of comes from a bit of like poorer background and then all of a sudden she finds out that she has inherited a heap of money and i'm talking like billions of dollars from this old guy who she'd never met and this old guy had like a family that were expecting to receive this inheritance and as part of like the dying will of this old rich guy like he basically wants her to go and live with his family in their massive mansion for a year and then she can inherit all this money and so she's trying to figure out why she's inherited all this money the family is trying to figure out why she's inherited all this money and i just think it'll be such an interesting read so i am beyond excited for this next up i have a book that i have owned for a very very long time um i recently watched the movie of it and i loved the movie so that's why i'm like okay now we need to actually read the book and that is this one here so this one is a walk to remember by nicholas sparks it says on the front it all comes down to who's by your side so basically in the movie i'm hoping it's the same as the book this book is told from the guy's point of view and basically he falls for this girl in high school who isn't like the most popular girl she's kind of like one of the more like i'd say like a more of an outsider kind of person she's very quiet she is very much like a goody two shoes like loves her schoolwork wants to do well all that kind of thing in the movie she is christian as well which i kind of hope she is in the book as well but i could be wrong and he basically wants to get close to her and she tries not to let people get close to her because she has something going on under the surface that she doesn't want people to know about i loved the movie it was great highly recommend it if you haven't seen it um and i love nicholas sparks's books i've read the lucky one um that he wrote and i loved that so yeah i am anticipating this will be a really good one this is a very short book which is why i put it on here because i do have some like chunky books on this list this year next up we have another kind of not like specifically christian book but one that you can find in christian bookstores and that is this one so this one is the five love languages the secret to love that lasts by gary chapman so phil and i were given this book as a gift when we got married um again it is a very short book so i thought it would be a really interesting one to read my love language is acts of service and i'm pretty sure phil's love language is words of affirmation or quality time it's one of the two of those and so this will basically just tell me how i can best love phil to meet his love language and how he can best love me to meet my love language Alrighty, next up we have a book that i have actually currently finished and absolutely loved and that is this one here so this one is addicted to you by krista and becca ritchie so this one is the first book in the addicted to you slash callaway sister series again i got this off of rachel catherine's recommendation there's 10 books in the series if you read them as like the duo series you can read the addicted to you series all on its own or you can read like the callaway sister series all on its own but like in the front of the book they have like the recommended reading order which is like the first three books in the addicted 
to you series and then the spin-off series is the Callaway sister series and it kind of jumps between the two i don't normally like a lot of spice but i think the way it was written it was okay like it didn't go into like too much detail but like you can tell it's a very spicy book Basically, the girl is addicted to sex and the guy is addicted to alcohol. They have been pretending to be in a relationship with each other since they were in high school because both of them come from like very rich families who would not approve of their lifestyle. So they were like friends like growing up, I think, or like they were friends in school and then they decided that they would like fake date to like please their families, but in reality they're kind of covering each other's secrets. So it's a very interesting dynamic. It's definitely got that fake dating trope so if you do like fake dating you will really like this. If you're single and you have certain convictions towards alcohol or sex you might struggle to get through this so I would say proceed with caution with the series. It is a fun read and it like I did read this quite quickly and I did love the writing like the writing was done very well. It is just told from the girl's point of view which I kind of wish they'd done like a dual point of view where you could read from the guy and read from the girl's point of view because I think it would have added to it. But that's just me personally. But I still love the series. I've only got the first book but I think I want to go out and get like the next few books in the series because I did thoroughly enjoy it. Book number 10 that we have is this. Now this is Lucy in the Sky by Paige Toon. This again I have had for a very long time. Um, I bought this in the Lions book sale like a few years ago. And I think it's just a romance book. Um, basically it seems like it's been a while since she's seen her best friend. Her best friend is getting married but her best friend is also marrying her like high school sweetheart. And like since she like fell for her high school sweetheart like she's kind of moved on. She's in like a new relationship. She's got a successful job all that kind of thing. But then she's flying home to see her best friend and her high school crush get married and so I think it's kind of like feelings and stuff that's kind of like hidden. Yeah I think it would be really interesting and yeah I love the cover it's very pretty but again I've just owned it for a really long time so I really want to get through it. So a couple of these Phil actually picked as well because I'd come up with like a main list and then I was like Phil I need some gaps. So one of the books that Phil picked that I have to read well I should try and read this year is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. I would say I've read like most of John Green's backlist it's just the Let It Snow book that is a collab book that I haven't read by him I think I've read every other book that he's released except for this one so this one is different I think to all the rest of them I don't really know too much about what it's about but I just want to read it to say that I've read all of John Green's books. Next up we have a book that I have tried to read once and I feel like just the style of it is not quite my style but I really just want to try and get through it and that is The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. I know a lot of people really love this book but I think I struggle with it because it's written as like a diary format rather than like a story with chapters and so I think the style of the way that it's written just isn't the way that I like to read a story and saying that like it's kind of like a coming of age story this guy is trying to like fit in a high school find friends find love all that kind of thing but I love the concept I think I'd got through like half of it but I have actually lost my place so I think I just want to start again from the beginning and see if I can get through this I also tried to read it like a few years ago so I don't know if like my tastes have kind of changed since then Phil has read this book and loved it so that's why we've kept it on our shelf otherwise I probably would have got rid of it but I want to give it one more crack and even if I don't like it Phil really likes it so we are going to be keeping this book regardless. So next up we have our first non-fiction book of this list and that is this one here. So this is Love Stories by Trent Dalton. Now I love the concept of this. Um, this guy is an Australian author. This guy he sat on a busy street in Brisbane I think with this typewriter and he wanted people to tell him his love story so some of them are like romantic love stories some of them are family some of them are kind of like the one that got away um, from what I can assume from the inside and I just think it was such a cool concept and I really wanted to read it and just hear other people's love stories it does have a little trigger warning in the front because they do talk about some quite hefty topics I just thought this was such a cool concept and I feel like this is a good one to be able to like 
read a couple of stories, put it down, read like a couple of chapters of like a fiction book and then kind of keep switching between the two. Or you could easily just like read this probably all in one go. Like it is quite a thick book and saying that like the writing is kind of big, very different to anything that's out there at the moment as well and I think that's really cool. Next up we have a chunky book and that is Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. So this one is the first book I believe but told from Edward's point of view and I feel like this has been a massive work in progress because when Twilight got released and like the special edition books in the back of it there is a couple of chapters from Midnight Sun and so I'm really really excited to kind of re-enter this Twilight world. I read Twilight in high school and contrary to popular belief I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I thought the books were done so well. The movie does butcher it, I won't lie. The book series is actually really good. So there's four books in the series, Twilight, New Moon, Eclipse and Breaking Dawn and then there's also like a little novella book which is The Second Short Life of Brie Tanner which I've also read really enjoyed and then I've also got the illustrated guide as well which kind of goes through like some of the common questions people ask and like a bit about the vampires like when they turned what their powers are about the werewolves about the Volturi all that kind of thing it goes a bit more in depth so I was like okay I need this just to finish off the series say that I have read the entire series this one is a chunky book like I think there's like around 600 and something pages oh, 756 pages so it is a chunky book and by the way I am planning like a wrap up of all of the books that I have read in 2023 at the end of the year I'll probably either put it up at the end of the year or I'll put it up in January so I guess in that video we can see how many of these books I have actually read in 2023 next up we have another book that has been on my shelf for a while and that is glow this one is written by Amy Kathleen Ryan it says her heart will determine the future this one I bought from a school gala probably a few years ago so I have had it on my shelf for a really long time which is kind of why I want to get through it and Phil and I who is my husband by the way we're both big readers and we're trying to just keep books on our shelf that we really love because we have heaps of books between the two of us so this one it seems like I'm guessing it's futuristic not in the past it says a ship heading for new earth is halfway through its incredible journey across the galaxy Okay, it must be futuristic. On board 16 year olds, Waverly and Kieran are part of the first generation born in space. They are in love. They believe their future is written in the stars. They have never before seen a stranger until the day they are wrenched apart and find themselves fighting for their lives. I think it's interesting. I like the concept of like them being born in space. It's very similar to The 100, which is a TV show that is kind of like Earth was kind of full of radiation basically after like this chemical leak. And so like the last surviving lot of humanity went in a massive spaceship and have been living in the sky in like space. Little bit of dystopian kind of thrown in there. So I thought it would be an interesting read so I really want to get through this this year. Next up we have a recent book that I have bought but I've heard so many good things about this book so I wanted to give it a go and that is this one here. This one is Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne. Again I heard Rachel Catherine rave about this book which is why I bought it. This one I actually managed to find in Kmart as well which I am so happy about. I think it was only like $15 or so. So I thought I would grab it and I really, yeah, I really want to read it. I think it's just like a guy and a girl that fall in love basically. Next up we have another chunky book that I have owned for a really really long time and that is the fifth Harry Potter book. So this is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I have read the first four Harry Potter books but I have never ever finished the series which is crazy. I never read it as a kid and I'm almost 25 so I really want to get through it this year. Um, I've just put this book in my video and not the last few because this is a really chunky book. 766 pages so that is a chunky book. Obviously it's written by JK Rowling as well. I feel like we all know. We all know that by this point. But yeah, I've read the first four. I have this one. I have the Half-Blood Prince and I have Deathly Hallows. And I also have the Cursed Child, but I just have put this one in there because otherwise I feel like this would be very unrealistic. The next book I don't actually have in my stack because Phil is currently reading it at the moment. So I'll pop a picture of it on the screen. But it is Enjoying God by R.C. Sproul. I did buy it for myself, but Phil was like, oh, I want to read something by this author. So he now has it and he's taken it to work today. So basically, again, I heard Rachel Catherine talk about this book and it's basically like 
I think how you can enjoy your relationship with God more which I am kind of looking at growing my relationship with God obviously as a Christian like you always want to be growing your relationship with God RC Sproul is a pastor as well in America so I'm sure he'll have some good wisdom to share and so far Phil is loving the book so hopefully I will as well and that is also my last Christian book that I have for this video and then the next book that I have to share with you guys is my last non-fiction book that I have and that is this one here so this one is why we sleep by Matthew Walker the new science of sleep and dreams now again I got this book off of Rachel Catherine's recommendations but Phil also listened to the audiobook of this and absolutely loved it I am obsessed with dreams I find them so fascinating I really find the whole concept of sleep and dreaming yeah just very interesting very odd I thought this book would be a great one to help me kind of understand what is actually going on and also kind of the science behind why we sleep so I thought this would be a great one to read the next book that I have again is Phil's pick that he put on the list and that is this one here so this one is The Martian by Andy Weir this I have seen the movie of and I absolutely loved it so I know that I'll love the book basically it's like this group of scientists that are studying the planet Mars and then I think like a storm hits or something and one of the guys they just cannot find and they presume that he's dead and they leave back to earth without him because they like have been waiting for like 20 minutes for him to come back to their like rocket ship and he just never comes back so I think he's dead and they go back to earth kind of live their lives and then they get a message from this guy on Mars saying that he's still alive and that he needs to be rescued kind of in the meantime between them working out how to get there and get all the supplies and stuff to be able to rescue him it kind of tells his story of him living on Mars and trying to like provide for himself. I'm pretty sure this is a fiction book. I don't think it's based on a true story. We're almost done. We have three books left. So the next book again is one that I've had on my shelf for a very very long time and that is this one here. So this one is the yearbook committee by Sarah Ayub I think. Um, it just says smart, funny and relevant. So it is told from... Well, there's five teenagers basically it kind of gives me like one of us is lying vibes but just without the murder mystery i think it just has like five different types of people and their stories of them trying to like survive through high school so you have the school captain the newcomer the loner the popular girl and the mp's daughter i just thought it would be an interesting read i don't know if it's told from it is told from different perspectives so that's really cool so you really get like a good insight into like how they live life um in high school i love the cover as well i think the cover is really pretty the next book that i have is this one here now this is the book thief by marcus suzak now this is not my bookmark, this is Phil's. So Phil is almost finished this book here, but I haven't read it and I know a lot of people absolutely love this book. So I want to get on the bandwagon, I want to see what the hype is about. I have not watched the movie either, I really want to. I'm not used to reading books that are set ages ago. This one's set in 1939 and it kind of tells like the story of a girl through the war. I'm gonna give it a go, gonna give it a crack, see what I think. And then the lucky last book that we have for this video is a book that I have picked up recently off of Marketplace. And it is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. I know a lot of people absolutely love this book. This basically follows the story of Tiffy and Leon. Now they share a flat but they've never met. It's a one bedroom flat and Tiffy I'm pretty sure works the night shift while Leon works the day and so they sleep at this flat when the other person is working and so I think the concept is really really interesting and yeah I know this has been popping off on book talk so I really want to get behind it I love the cover I think the cover is so incredibly cute yeah a lot of people have like raved about this book there's good recommendations for it so thought I'd give it a go hopefully I will like it I just think the concept's really cool as well so there we go guys that is everything that I have those are all of the 23 books that I hope to read in 2023 i'm genuinely really excited about all of these books um i feel like most of them are like new although there are obviously some that i have had for a really long time hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not already please make sure to turn on the notifications and check out my social media it's always linked down below in the description box if you guys do want to see more book videos from me let me know um i'm not a booktuber i won't be like being like these are the 20 plus books that i read in january like no that's just not 
realistic for me and my schedule but I could do like a reading wrap up for like maybe quarterly in the year or something um let me know if you'd be interested um I do want to do a video of me organizing our bookshelf as well because I need to get a new bookshelf and I want to organize things by category so it's a bit easier for like Phil and I if we're feeling a certain mood but I have been buying a lot of books recently as well there will be some book hauls that I have up or coming soon depending on my schedule but yeah that is everything that I have and I will see you guys in my next video bye